Today we're going to do a build out on the Keychron V5. This is the bare bone non knob version. So let's get out of the box. So before we get into the build on this one, let's just have a rundown of the specifications. The V5 is the 1800 compact layout in the V-Series offerings, which is also known as 96%, also known as just a compact full layout, and it has 100 keys. In terms of pricing, it starts at $69 in the barebone configuration and $96 in the fully assembled configuration. I've gone for the barebone version, which comes without keycaps or switches. The case material is ABS plastic. This is the non-transparent version or the carbon black version. Version. The plate is painted steel which doesn't scratch while hot swapping switches. The PCB is hot swappable and compatible with 3 and 5 pin switches. It has south facing full RGB and is a wired only PCB and keyboard so there's no wireless connectivity available. The keyboard has a silicone dampening pad in the case and it has a foam pad between the plate and the PCB. It is Windows and Mac compatible with a switch for switching between modes next to the USB-C port and it's fully programmable with QMK and VIA. What I will say is that when you plug the keyboard in and you've got the VIA app running, with most new Keychron keyboards, it won't automatically detect the keyboard. This is because a new VIA code must be approved on the, on the app before they automatically detect the keyboards. There is a workaround for this. If you read through the product listing, so if you buy the V5, look at the V5 listing, scroll down to QMK and VIA, and it will give you instructions and a JSON file that you can download. The method that they use on the website didn't work for me, and I'm going to do a separate video about how I connect my Keychron keyboards to VIA but if you're having problems before I get the video up then feel free to leave a comment below and I'll answer you with how I did it down there. So for my build I went for the Wuche Studios Aurora Clear Linear Switches and the reason for that is I wanted to get the most out of the RGB in this build. The Aurora Clears have clear housings, top and bottom housings are completely clear which obviously is great for RGB. They're five pin mounted and they're reasonably weighted for my taste. They've got an actuation force of 53 grams and a bottom out force of 63.5 grams. The keycaps are very much the inspiration for this build and those are the Pixel Universe from Keychron. They're a very well known and popular set of keycaps. They always come into stock and sell out almost immediately. The Pixel Universe keycap set is 137 keys and they are OEM profile die sublimated PBT keycaps. They have a really nice pixel design on the keycaps and they've got a really nice bright punch you in the face colorway going on with the purples, pinks and turquoise. They're kind of similar to pudding keycaps with the intent being to let the RGB light flood out from the sides but because it's a Keychron keycap set and because Keychron keyboards have south facing RGB or south facing LEDs you can see what they've done with these is they've left the sides and the top sides of the keycap transparent and then you can see the bottom edge of the keycap and obviously the upward facing side of the keycap are like a solid color so what that does is it means that you don't get the LED shine straight in your eyeball which is a really good idea taking this keyboard apart is an absolute breeze you just flip it over where you'll see the eight brass case screws unscrew those, flip it back over and then you can lift off the top frame. From here you can unscrew the 11 tray mount screws from the keyboard and that allows you to lift out the plate and PCB assembly. You'll see here that they've put a slot in the switch housing for the Windows and Mac key and that really makes it easy to just lift this PCB and plate assembly out without it catching up or without having to take out the switch housing. Next you need to flip over the plate and PCB assembly and unscrew the six screws holding the plate and PCB together. From there you can just take apart the plate, the PCB and the foam pad. Then finally you just unscrew the 12 screws that are holding the stabilizers in place and then you can drop out the stabilizers. And that's the keyboard completely apart. So from here we move on to my selected mods for this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up the underside of the PCB while it's completely apart and it can be flat to the desk. This is the easiest time to do it I find. I did three layers of this pretty heavy black masking tape. I use black masking tape because it looks nice on my transparent builds. It doesn't really matter for this one because it's not transparent. Once I'd applied the tape mod and trimmed the edges, I then cut out the holes where the PCB lands over the mounts in the case. 
Next was the PE foam mod. I cut the PE foam sheet to size and then I obviously cut out squares where the stabilizer housings would sit on top of the PCB. Next, I sorted out the stabilizers. I cleaned the stems and did the holy mod using 0.15 or pour on foam stickers. In terms of lubing the stabilizers, my go-to lube job at the moment is that I lube the outside of the stem with Crytox 205 grade zero. I lube the inside of the housing with Crytox 205 grade zero. And then I dip the wire itself in dielectric grease. This obviously obviously lubes between the wire and the inside of the stem, but also between the wire and the clip on the housing. And with that done, we're into assembly. First, I needed to place the PE foam on top of the PCB and secure it in place by installing the stabilizers. To screw in the stabilizers, I just peeled back the tape on the underside of the PCB instead of cutting more holes. Eventually, I remembered I needed to get underneath the tape to screw the plate and the PCB back together, so I decided to remove the tape altogether. This isn't a problem. A three-layer masking tape job it becomes like a really stiff pad, if you like, and as long as you work cleanly, it remains plenty sticky enough to put it back on again. From here, you just stack the plate, the foam pad, and the PCB back together again and then you secure them with the screws. Next we land the plate and PCB assembly back in the case and secure it with the tray mount screws. Then I cut slots in the PE foam mod basically for the center pins on the switches. I just cut the center slot for the fat pin in the bottom of the switches because the other four pins will make holes themselves without a problem. Then the top frame can be reinstalled and secured back in place with those eight brass case screws. Then it's time to install the switches and the keycaps. So let's see how all that turned out with the typing test. So as always, we'll finish on some of my thoughts and opinions of this keyboard. If you've not seen my other videos on the V-Series keyboards from Keychron, all of the keyboards in the lineup are exactly the same in terms of materials and quality, with only the layout changing. This is my fifth keyboard out of the seven that are currently available in the lineup. The ones I don't currently have are the V6, which is the full layout. I won't get that one because I've got the 1800. I prefer compact full layout over like a proper full layout, so I didn't bother with that one. And then the last one that I haven't got is the V7, and the only reason I haven't got that is because it was just released and it's now in the post to me. The V7 is the 70% installment of the series. They remain an excellent keyboard in the train mount entry level kind of category if you like and are in fact a very hard to beat train mounted sub $70 keyboard in the bare bone configuration. There are some worthy rivals out there now. Akko for example are releasing some really good keyboards but the V series does remain close to if not at the top of the mountain for a train mount keyboard at this price point. The only thing that I would would say is that I recently built and tested the Akko ACR Pro 75, a gasket mount acrylic keyboard that cost $99 in the bare bone configuration and this made for a very interesting keyboard. Click on the card in the corner for the video on that one. At the kind of sub $100 price point that keyboard does sit in a different category but I did very much like it and it got me wondering if Keychron were going to do something similar. They currently have the Q series which is an aluminium chassis, a gasket mounted keyboard that sits in the $150 to $200 price range. So the next logical step for me seems like a plastic chassis gasket mounted keyboard in the sub $100 range. And to be honest, I'm kind of craving that after building and using five of the V-Series keyboards. That said, the V-Series keyboards are still an excellent option regardless of your experience, but I would say that they're an excellent keyboard for beginners in the hobby. These keyboards are just designed to be taken apart, put back together, modded as many times as you want to. The quality of the materials is great. You aren't going to break stuff taking it apart and putting it back together if you go carefully. And they come with a few spare screws in case you lose anything. For me, anyone in the hobby that doesn't have a V-Series in their collection is kind of missing out, but I think that they're a must-have keyboard for beginners. And I think that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.